we're starting on with chapter two. In chapter two, uh, we don't have as many graphs and stuff. We have a little bit more factual information. It's a little drier. It's a little more straightforward from the book. So we don't spend a whole lot of time on it. But um, I'll hit the high points here with this PowerPoint in, in the next day or so. But then we'll, we fly right through chapter two. And we will have a reading quiz uh, next time over chapter two. So make sure you've read and taken notes. I'm not giving you a, a study guide to start off with this time around. But the quiz will be a lot the same. I will have a an outline of the chapter that's produced by the book, and then I will just pick some blanks from that uh, outline for you to fill out for the chapter two reading quiz. Um, today, what, or, yeah, today what we're talking about is uh, comparing and contrasting how various economic systems answer the questions, what to produce, how to produce it, and for whom to produce it. Now you may ask, what are different economic systems? Well, economic systems are like here in the United States, where we have a free market. That's one type of economic system. Whereas in Cuba, it's very communistic, so therefore they have what's called a command economy, and we'll talk about those a little bit more. So in today's uh, in today's video or today's PowerPoint, uh, we got the three questions each society must answer. We got the three economic models, and then we have a video uh, in which I want you to uh, go to a blog and answer uh, and post just some comments and thoughts about a, a place called Shenzhen. All right, there's three questions each society must answer. And not only must they answer them, but they also must figure out how are we going to answer them. And question number one is what to produce. Well, here in the United States, it's de decided by business owners what's going to be produced. Um, in, in some places, it's decided by tradition. And in some places, it's decided by the government, by very, very few people. Well, here in the United States, if you have a product you want to go make, as long as it's not going to harm anyone, harm the environment, you are more than welcome to go and make that and try and sell it. So products are, what products are going to be made are decided by the individual producers. However, it's actually decided by you and me because our dollar votes. Anytime you buy something, you are voting for more of that product to be made. If you... Uh, do not buy something and nobody buys it, then you are voting for that product to no longer be made anymore. And I remember a couple years ago, my kids wanted to go to Gas America to buy oh, some silly bands. Well, obviously, you know, that was the only place that, that made them at the time. That was it. And so we always, they always want to go to Gas America, Gas America. And they were selling those packages of silly bands that go on your wrist for like four or five bucks a package. It was ridiculous. But nobody else had them. You know, six months later, now everybody's got a Kroger, Meyer, every gas station has them, CVS, Walgreens, and they're priced at like a buck. So everybody voted that they wanted more of those, and lo and behold, here in America, we had more of those. So um, what is going to be produced is a decision that every society must answer. All right, what I'm showing here is uh, some products. Have they been flops, or were they wise uh, wise products to be made by by producers, by business owners, by entrepreneurs, people who wanted to take a chance. And most of these on here have certainly been flops. The top left one there is Bengay Aspirin. I don't know if any of you know what Bengay is, but Bengay was a cream that you used for muscle soreness. It has a really, really, really strong smell. And so that was a very successful product and still is a successful product. So they thought they would give Bengay Aspirin a shot. Well, it, it, it didn't work. The, the association with the smell, maybe the name, I, I don't know. Just It was not good. Um, the next one was Pet Water. Over there as you go to the left, that was not successful. Uh, as much money as people want to spend on their pets, they were not willing to pay for special water for their pets. The next one there is the Dollar Sacagawea coin. And this is one the government has tried and tried and tried for years to get us to use and, and enjoy. But, however, all of us, we still want those dollar bills. They haven't got us to like that dollar coin. So that has not been successful yet for the federal government, even though they continue to try and try. In the bottom left corner, in the, in the, in the bottom left corner is a couple of attempts at uh, – people to start football leagues to battle with the NFL. The XFL was the more recent one of the two and, and didn't make it. Uh, they had strange, they got to put their nicknames on the back of their jerseys. The Probably the most famous one was a guy by the, that went by the name He Hate Me. Um, then on the bottom was the USFL. It was probably the one that had the most success. All, you know, if any of them were going to be successful in um, competing with the NFL as we know it <clears throat> um, was the USFL. 
There was an ESPN movie made about it, uh, 30 for 30 film. It's really good. But, uh, again, not successful. Then there's the Rubik's Cube, as all of you probably know. That has been extremely successful. It was in the 80s and is still around today. Some of you may even know how to solve it. And then the last one, which obviously was not uh, successful, was yogurt shampoo. So the moral of the story is what to produce. Anybody can try to produce anything. It's the people that decide. The government doesn't care as long as you're not harming someone. Uh, if you're trying to make a buck, good for you. Because if you're trying to make a buck, odds are you are employing somebody, hiring somebody. And that is what makes our economy hum along. All right, now, I may have mentioned in class that State Road 37 out here that goes through Center Grove out by Fairview Road, Stones Crossing, is becoming Interstate 69 here in the next three to four years. <laughs> so there'll be on-ramps and off-ramps and everything. Now, in this situation, it's the federal government and the state government deciding that we need Interstate 69. So that's why we consider ourselves, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, a mixed economy. For the most part, the people just make the decisions. But there are some situations where the federal government steps in and makes those decisions, like building an interstate, turning a road into an interstate, so on and so forth. Now, down here, you can see uh, here we are, right here in this area where my red dot is. And then as you go along, this is existing State Road 37. But then the rest of this, from the blue, the green, the red, the yellow, all the way down to Evansville, that's all new interstate that's going through land and everything. A lot of people are really, really upset about that, especially the people here in Bloomington. Uh, there's some bats or squirrels or something that are going to be killed that a lot of people in Bloomington are really, really upset about. And right now they have, uh, they've they've completed all of this up to here, and I believe they're close to finishing up to here. It's very, very close. And then they're doing preliminary work as of right now in 2012 on this part of the interstate. And then, of course, this last part will be a piece of cake because the, the infrastructure and the road's pretty much already there. Okay, the first question is what to produce. And then the second question is how to produce it. And this goes back to Chapter 1 a little bit. The firms, which is the entrepreneurship, use land, labor, and capital to produce a good or a service. should actually be on that slide, a good or a service. And how that is produced is, uh, is up to them. Each of the three factors can be used in different ways to produce the same amount. So maybe you uh, decide to use more capital and let a couple of uh, employees go. Or maybe you make it more labor intensive and hire more people and not invest all the money in the capital. So that how something is produced is decided by the entrepreneurs, uh, not the government. Um, so what to produce and how to pro excuse me how to produce it. All right, and then the third question is who gets to use it, what to produce, how to produce it, and for whom. So who gets those goods and services? In a capitalistic society, those who participate the most successfully in the market tend to get to use those. So in other words, um, who makes the most money? Um, who lives in an area where those types of things are maybe built by the government? Um, who gets to buy those products that we're talking about? Um, some may... Uh, deem this is not fair, so the government sometimes has to step in and say, who gets what? You know, who gets this bridge in the Monon Trail, right? Well, the government has stepped in and built that. Who gets a roundabout? Why did they put that at Fairview and Morgantown? Why not somewhere else? Well, those are decisions the government makes for hopefully the good of the people. Um, this is a, a constant struggle for people. Um, a lot of times in economics we talk about equity versus efficiency. Um, you know, are, is this an equity issue or an efficiency issue? And sometimes um, that struggle is what separates Republicans and Democrats sometimes. You know, it's not very efficient to have Social Security. It would be better if we didn't have Social Security. However, um, we like to take care of our people and make sure nobody's starving and nobody's uh, poverty stricken. So, Therefore, we have a Social Security program that everybody pays into as they work, but at the end, they get a retirement benefit as they turn age 65. Now, you and I won't get that benefit until we're 72, but right now, people that are retiring at age 62, 63, 64 get that Social Security benefit. Now, that's, that's an equality example, but some people argue this isn't very efficient, and our country as a whole would be better off if we made some changes to Social Security. The more changes you want to make to Social Security, the 
more Republican you are. The fewer changes you want to make, probably the more of a Democratic 